Hello, and welcome to a time to create and relax with uh, Minnesota Virtual or Minnesota Conservatory for the Arts and the Caledonia Public Library. Uh, this is sponsored in part by a grant from the Selco Library Systems. And we do appreciate that. Uh, the, the video will be probably available on the Caledonia Library Facebook page and uh, will be free for you to pass along to friends, enjoy it with others. Um, today's class, we're just going to do a little bit of relaxing and creating. And there's a lot of, not a lot of rules with this, but I have a few simple things on my desktop that you can use. And I have a lot of other fun things to show you that you can add to it if you have them available, or I can let you know some of where things are available. So um, a lot of what we're doing is called doodling. We have a couple of websites here that are very helpful. Um, one of the original uh, kind of trademarks that took this drawing style to quite the um, quite the heights it is today was a, a method called Zentangle. And they found that when you uh, kind of concentrate on something simple and repetitive, like a, a drawing a pattern, it actually helps your brain to release the feel good chemicals that will help your bring your blood pressure down and just to give you a better overall feeling of well being. There's a lot of science out there that says, tells what that, how that works. Uh, but for the most part, we just realize that we just enjoy doing something that's not, it's not too challenging. This is something you don't have to have any uh, drawing or art background in order to do and be very successful actually. And um, you can start with the very simplest of materials. So most people will say just to start with a pen and um, we often use a super or the ultra fine point, like a Sharpie, or this is a similar thing. It's just called a fine point pen. Uh, this one's I think from a local dollar store and uh, gel pens, ink pens, whatever works. We do like to have something that has a fairly smooth, consistent writing um, surface on it so that your lines will be consistent when you're, when you're drawing. Um, the, other thing that I often use is a an ebony pencil or some sort of drawing pencil. This is a pretty soft drawing pencil. And this really isn't actually for drawing in shapes. It's actually more for just doing some shading later. And when you put the graphite down on the paper, you are able to spread it and blend it with a blending stub or a Q-tip or your finger, a lot of things. So um, these blending stubs are available in any art supply uh, section in any major retailer. Um, they're also called tortillons and they come in a lot of different sizes. So a package of 10 of these is uh, probably less than three dollars. Um, any pencil will work. The pencils that are softer or on the uh, I think it's the B side of the scale. Um, this is like an 8B so it's a big fat lead and it allows me to kind of get a nice layer of um, graphite on the paper without too many scratchy lines. The other thing I like is a good eraser. Um, everyone's, you're not supposed to do a lot of erasing when you're doing this doodling, but every once in a while, if I need to draw an outline or something, there's sometimes a, a guideline that I'd like to erase later. Um, and so that's not used a lot, but handy to have around. Okay, a couple of websites that you can look up for ideas and lots and lots and lots of patterns. Uh, one is called tanglelist.com. It's the official Zentangle pattern site and all kinds of directions and really good information there. Another system is called Creative Pattern Tangling and their website, I find it to be a little bit easier to navigate it is pattern-collections.com and they have a sister site called CPT, which is actually kind of, you just need to, do, it's a free membership, but um, a little bit more for people who like to teach uh, the tangling and, and, uh, and there's kind of a nice, um, nice group of people that you can get in contact with. So pattern-collections.com has uh, lots and lots of patterns that you can follow. They 
uh, both sites will give you a what's called a step out. So just a basic idea of the the very simplest of forms and lines that you need to use to create a pattern. And then sometimes the step out also gives you some uh, suggestions for adding some highlights and some um, shadows and stuff, which really makes your artwork pop. Um, some people call it intuitive drawing because we're not starting with something in mind and it's not supposed to look like anything. There's almost usually not an upside or a downside or right or wrong. Um, but some of the techniques then have been used to to go on and create just absolutely beautiful artwork. And that's often called ZIA or Zentangle Inspired Art. Uh, lots and lots of different names out there for all these things. Um, for the first patterns, we like to start with a small space. You don't want to uh, look at a blank piece of paper and be intimidated because there's so much space on there and don't know what to do. So we like to use something like a tuna can or a masking tape roll or something like that, that we can trace a circle inside of and give ourselves some boundaries to work with. So I like to put a few on a page. And the other thing you can do that a lot of us are finding we like to do now is we'll cut out um, things out of uh, boxes, you know, the recycled stuff that we all have on hand. And then the back side is a great place to just play and doodle. It's not a great big um, masterpiece, but it's just a place to put some ideas down. So this was one class we did recently, and we were exploring two patterns. One was called the crab flame, which is this little thing here. One was called the fractal comma, which is this. And then we used a bunch of um, techniques we had already previously learned to make a stylized Christmas tree. So, um, so you can see that most of the lines are pretty basic and you can build them into all kinds of things. And once you learn a few techniques and if you want to work on something larger, you can do something like this, which would be called Zentangle Inspired Art. And it starts with a very simple pattern and some very simple lines actually. And you just keep building and building and building and adding some highlights. And then obviously a little color is always fun eventually. So a few examples of Zentangle inspired art here. And as you probably noticed, this uh, can be very similar to mandala art um, because a mandala a lot of times is an eight sided figure that just keeps uh, building out and every leg continues to have the same step on it as you go, which we have also figured out is also similar to snowflakes. Um, so we can, this one we did on a six sided, um, kind of six legs. And you just start in the middle and try one pattern and then build it as you go. And there's obviously no right or wrong and they can be as unique as snowflakes. So lots of things in nature that we can look at for patterns. So once I have a small boundary there's a few things that the kind of techniques I'm going to just move all the rest of my stuff off my table or off my my page here um, are your lines do not need to be perfect if they're close you can work with them if they're not close you doing this will um, will help you improve your lines and your hand to eye coordination so to start off with one of the simplest forms um, I'm going to just draw a line from the top to the bottom of my circle. If you'd like, you can put a little dot at the top and a little bot dot at the bottom. That gives you something to look at. So as you go, you start kind of like driving a car, you have to look where you're going and eventually you'll get there. Then I like to kind of visually divide each of those halves in half again. And it's not gonna be perfect because it's on a circle just going to try to, once you set your pen down, you don't want to go so fast that it doesn't write, but you don't want to go so slow that it starts to wobble either. So decide where you're going, take a deep breath, let it out, set the pen down and take it to the end spot. So set your uh, work, your pen down on the dot and go to the other dot. I'm going to do the same thing, both, um, dividing up the other direction. And yes, it'll kind of look like a checkerboard. Um, and we're just gonna use those divisions of the space 
to get creative inside of it. And one of the fun things about the tangling, zentangle, doodle, whatever you want to call it method is that you can start with a blank piece of paper and really fast. It's not so intimidating because there's it you've created smaller spaces to work in. So uh, that would be a very simple grid to start in. And this method is going to use either a straight line or a curved line. And they can be short, they can be long. That's really the only kinds of lines we're gonna work with. Um, we can combine those and we can do an S curve line. It's not the shape of an S, but it has a, a backwards curve and a forward curve, or we can do the opposite of that, which we like to call a two curve. And um, some of the other shapes we'll maybe use are small circles, which obviously is just one long curved line. And um, a couple of techniques, uh, you can do what's called an aura, which is just following line around and you can do it multiple times if you want trying to stay about the same distance away all the way around and you'll find that you can't be perfect this is uh, just a way to relax and do your best and you'll notice that as you get going and you get further into the, your your miniature artwork that you won't even notice after a while when all of your lines were not perfect so um, an aura is always a simple way to uh, expand into a space. Another technique is, and I'll give you a title on those. Another technique is called expanding or just an expand line. So I could take any shape. We'll start with a square, oops, square, which is really just four straight lines, right? And I will do another box kind of shooting off from that one and you'll notice that it changes shape really quickly but it grows and looks larger so you can do that with any kind of shape you want that's kind of a fun one um, you can do fill which can be something as simple as taking a shape and just crossing it with parallel lines. Your lines could crisscross, they could do all kinds of things just to kind of, you're not coloring in the whole area, but you're just filling it with some lines. Another um, line idea that we like to play with is um, feathering. And again, these are all just kind of combinations of short little lines. So if I want to do a feathering, I could start with any shape I want. And I could come off the side. Kind of keep adding something like that. And... Um, there's also a line and some of these have different names depending on who is talking about it and what company they're, what trademark they're doing. An echo line would be starting and ending at the same point, but getting a little bit wider in the middle. So that can make a really beautiful shape in a short period of time. And they can go longer, they can go wider, all kinds of things for just a lot of variation. Okay, so using some of these um, little techniques with some straight lines and curved lines, one of the simplest things to do if you have a kind of a checkerboard pattern like this is to go in and practice kind of connecting some of the dots. So from this intersection to this intersection, I'm going to do a curved line and you start, put your pen down on that intersection and we wanna aim for the next intersection. So you could do, this one will pretend that our next corner would be down here somewhere. That one as well. Maybe this one is 
we'll figure that's the corner. And I could just keep repeating this. So every time you repeat a line, you just kind of relax and enjoy the, the feeling of your pencil making a line on the paper and take a deep breath and just kind of concentrate on that. And it's kind of nice to continue the lines, all the lines that go one direction. Then I could turn my paper a little bit to get a little bit more comfortable and do all the lines another direction. And again, I'm just doing a short curved line from corner to corner. And I can, it's starting to get much more busy and all of a sudden you can't even tell where some of my lines didn't, weren't perfect. Um, and then we can also do opposite direction lines. So we can do a curved line that way. And you could go down your columns or across your rows, doesn't matter. I like to just kind of pick one direction and then keep going that way. This pattern is often called flower of life or something, some variation on that. Okay, oh, let's see. So I gotta do my other direction arch um, curved line here. And you could do every other, um, it's really up to you if you decide which there's that there's some that you want to do and some that you want to leave blank. That's totally fine as well. Uh, and you could go ahead and fill this all in. Now we could use some fill techniques and start doing a fill pattern. I'm going to do just the kind of the straight lines and I'm going to do an alternating side here. Go back and fill that a little bit. I'm just trying to start on this line and on that line. Oops, went over a little bit. All right, mistakes will make them into something beautiful later. We don't even need to worry about mistakes. Then I can decide on the next one. Do I want to mirror it and do the same one or do I want to do opposites? I think I'm going to do opposites this time. So if you did this pattern every day for a year, you could probably come up with different ways to decorate it every time. Probably surprise yourself while you're doing it. Okay, then I think the next one is going to be the same as the first one. So I'll start here, alternate sides. And just keep going. Okay. Another thing we could do would be to ink, I'm oh, sorry, ink the line or the space. And that would just be coming right up next to the line we've already drawn and filling in the space. Now you can continue to do this with just black. You could do a color. It's fun to do white gel pens on dark paper, like even brown paper bags work great. Other recycled materials. Kind of the ideal space when you start out doing this is nothing larger than about a three and a half inch square or a three to four inch circle. Just kind of make yourself a nice little border that's not gonna be overwhelming. And I find that these size circles like this one from my masking tape roll are something that you can color with for a while and pretty much be done with it in an hour. We like to call them our mini masterpieces because they just uh, gives you a chance to sit down and relax, um, but it doesn't take, you don't have to go set up 
whole bunch of equipment or uh, have a special place for it. In fact, I've heard of a lot of people who are doing this these days when on Zoom meetings, when nobody's watching what their desktop is. And you can often do this while you're actually concentrating quite hard on something else like a meeting, which a lot of people have found that they do it if you doodled in your margins of your notebook over the years and stuff. It gives you something to a way to move just a little bit. Keeps you kind of relaxed. As you're going along, you just kind of want to make sure you're not squeezing really hard on your pen or your pencil. You're just holding it gently. So you can already see how quickly my shapes start changing and filling and having all kinds of crazy things going on. Um, we could choose, let's see. Sometimes you could do additional lines like a an echo line here, which starts and ends at the same place. And I went kind of around the circle and I could find another circle to do that around. Oops, that one could have been a little bit bigger. Something like that. Um, you could fill additional shapes within some of these, some, something as simple as a circle, which is often called an orb. You could fit an orb in all of the spaces that didn't have two lines or an echo line in them. So I suppose if I did this one, I should do a circle kind of here. Kind of like to just alternate things. I want to take turns. Let's see, I did one here, so I'll do this one over here. Kind of fills in some of those spaces really fast. I had a circle in this one, so if I'm alternating, I suppose that one. This one would have, oops, I think I went the wrong way. Um, I intended it to be on the outside of that one. See, not really, not really a mistake. You just go with it and fix it as you want. Okay, so obviously we can get as detailed as we want kind of fill some things. And as you go, you can choose your own pattern and um, figure out how you want to decorate things. And you kind of, sometimes you start getting a little dizzy and have to look back and figure out what, what you missed. Anyway, there's a few ideas there. Uh, once you get some shapes going in there. It's always a little fun to add some shadows in some places. So one of the easiest ways to add a shadow is where wherever you have a whole bunch of lines coming to an intersection, that's a great place for a little bit of a shadow. So we'll put a shadow kind of in each of these corners. Let's see. going like that. And then I'm going to kind of blend this a little bit right away so you can see what it looks like when that blending stub goes over it. Mine needs to be sharpened. You can sharpen these with a little piece of sandpaper, clean the edge off. So all of a sudden this shape here appears to have more dimension than the same basic one over here. So adding some highlights, which would be the spots that I didn't color in, and some shadows in the corners makes it look like this section, the shadows, are something that's further away from us than what's in the middle. 
or this would be the part that's closest to us. So that'd be one way to add shadows, would be maybe an alternating squares. I'll do a second one just in case, make sure that it looks the way I wanted it to. Another uh, shadowing technique would be to take, let's say, let's take all the little sections that I put the lines in, and I'm going to put a shadow around the outside of it to look like the, the background is further away. It should actually make my lines kind of pop out a little bit. So let's see, I'm going around the outside of each of the sections with the little short lines in them. This is one way, if some of your lines maybe went a little bit over the edge, this will help. You can just kind of smooth them out with your pencil. back in and just soften the edge of that line a little bit. The graphite's fun to kind of move it around on the paper a little bit. Let's see, maybe I'm going to do all four sides of this one where I put the orb in the middle. See what that does to that shape. So without even adding any fill lines, but adding a little bit of shadowing in the background, it really changes the way that whole section of your little drawing appears to pop out. So it's it appears to become more three-dimensional when you add shadows and highlights. Gives it a little bit of a sense that something is maybe moving or there's just some dimension in there. So it's not just a plain flat object anymore. So let's continue this for a few squares so you get a little bit better picture. I'm calling them squares. I guess I'm talking about the, the original shapes we had, which some of them had some four straight lines, I guess. And I will do this one as well, just to kind of continue the pattern a little bit longer. And as you can tell, we're getting a lot of lines and shapes and stuff in here, and we haven't even added any color yet. So the original Zentangle uh, method, it was just black and white. They did all, um, only the, pen, the graphite pencil maybe, and some um, some tortillon or something like that. Now over here I had done an extra circle that I didn't want, so I think I'm just going to do that shadow a little bit darker. And it's not going to completely cover it, but it will disguise it a little bit, and you won't notice that so much. And I think I'm even going to do a little bit of shadow on the inside of that whole outside edge. There we go. My whoops line is still there, but it's not quite as prominent. So let's see if I'm doing everything in a diagonal or every other one or however you want to put it. There would be one here. Now it's always fine to leave a space white and have that be your highlights, but it's also fun to get a white gel pen or a white acrylic paint marker and go back at the end and put some highlights in. So let me finish that and the brand that we have found that is the most effective is a brand called Sakura from Japan and their role, their line of 
um, gel pens is called a jelly roll. And the white jelly roll pens are just seem to be the by far the best that we've found for writing over dark stuff. Um, so I could go in and put some highlights in or even more decorative spots like some little circles. And it's so nice that it shows up on the dark. Sometimes we even go in and put in maybe a line through the center of all of these. That makes it look a little bit more rounded when it has an area that looks like it's got a, a light shining on it. So fun, a bunch of fun little things you can do with white gel pens. Um, a couple of the other products that make it fun if you want to add some more color and um, do something that's more considered Zentangle inspired art. Um, some of my favorites would be using colored pencils. Um, you can use multiple colors of colored pencils. And here I did colored pencils and I, you can see some shading around the outside with this um, graphite pencil. You can get gel pens and uh, they come in a lot of fun colors. This is a set from Menards that was only $5 and I'm actually pretty pleased with a lot of the colors in the set. They don't write quite as smoothly as the Jelly Roll pens do but they are pretty bright. The Jelly Roll brand pens also come in a solid color like jewel tones and a metallic color, which the metallics are fun to color areas completely in with because when it dries, it has a little bit of a sparkle to it. It doesn't usually show up on the camera really well, but the colors are pretty bright and you can, with those, you can write over black, black paper or black ink. And even though you don't see it quite as bright as the white, when you see it in person, you will see the, um, the metallic glow depending on how the light hits. It's kind of reflective. So those are fun. A little bit more expensive to buy the Secura brand Jelly Rolls, but um, the their metallic ones are the, the ones I found by that are by far the best at being an opaque covering. Okay, um, let me check and see. Oh, I guess I have this. This was the colors, my trial batch when I tried all the Menards. Well, this is actually put out by Sargent Art, which is usually, I think, considered kind of a student quality art, but they were $5 at Menards, so I thought it was worth a try. I also like colored pencils, and this was a nice set from Hobby Lobby, uh, a 24 pack, and there was quite a nice assortment of colors in there. Uh, but generally, if I use colored pencils, I just go back to my uh, colored pencils from Crayola. Crayola actually makes a really nice, pretty decent colored pencil to start with. So, and their 36 pack of, with a lot of colors in it is very reasonable. Um, checking back here to see if there's anything I missed. Uh, one other fill pattern, let's see if I have room to do it on here, is called Flux. And this is one of everybody's favorites. Um, oftentimes you start in a corner and you do a, a small shape that has a point at one end and it's rounded at the other. And then you just keep building the same shape off of that one, wherever you can fit one. And sometimes they can be fairly large. Sometimes they can be smaller. When you first start doing it, it looks a little bit messy, but as you fill in the background a little bit, maybe add some color, it starts to look really interesting. It can also be done kind of free form outside of a shape. So flux is 
a popular fill pattern. A lot of times if you're doing large flux, you'll do a line and a dot in the middle of them. Just gives a lot of little uh, personality to them. Let's see, you can always fill an area with just circles, little circles. And if you try to do them random, touching each other, but not really in rows, different little sizes, that's always kind of fun. It's hard to be random. See how mine always end up lining up. So I have to try to start doing different sizes every once in a while. And then again, you can ink in some of the background spaces that weren't your circles. And that makes the whole thing much more interesting. There we go. Um, let's do kind of a crosshatch in here since I can go corner to corner both directions and then I can follow those lines kind of parallel down this way and that way. That's a nice way to really quite fill in a space without coloring it all black. Uh, cross hatches work there. The echo lines that we were doing, you could continue. Let's see, we've got, we'll go in this space and I'm gonna do an echo line around each one and then do another one until I kind of start filling up the space. I probably should go one that way too. There we go. That's a nice, way to add some shadows right along those lines and it also helps smooth out and hide some of our lines that weren't perfect. Go blend in that shadow a little bit. Spread that graphite out just a hair. And we've got some more Kind of fancy shapes go in there. All right, so I left all of these with the orb in them with no design inside. And I could do, let's see, let me see if I can do some kind of a fold. A fold would be ending on that line and then starting at that point, but going out to the next one, starting at that point and going out to the next one, starting at that point and going further away. Let's see. I'm imagining where those lines would be if they went off the paper there. Oh, sometimes that's, oh, sorry. Sometimes that's also called, uh, I can't think of the name of that one right now. It'll come to me. A fold would be, I'll do a little square here with a fold in it. Uh, your lines would be parallel. So I would keep my lines parallel all the way around. So every time I end a line there, I'm gonna go back a little ways on that one to start my next one. And that's supposed to look kind of folded. All right. I think I need something up here since I 
did this circle there. Maybe I'll do another one here. And then I'm kind of running out of space there. So let's see, what else do I want to do in there? Maybe a feather. So coming off of that one, off of that one, off of that one. And then I'm going to, I think this one I'm going to actually ink in that whole background that I didn't do. Kind of like that. And I can also shadow down here at the base just a little bit. And there you have it. Basically, the idea that I started, I didn't pre-plan any of this. I just started drawing and kind of started with a really simple shape and just kind of went with it. See what happens when you use just some straight lines and some curved lines. A little bit of shadows around the outside or we could even shadow around the whole outside of this larger circle that we did make the whole thing look like it's um, popping up off the page a little bit. That's always a little bit fun too. You could, you could add writing inside of it, lettering or names or words or whatever if you wanted and decorate inside those. And without even doing much with color today, We've kind of created a fun little design. Once again, there's no uh, right side up or up or, or down. And um, it's kind of not representational of anything. But it's very relaxing. And something that you can often do along with somebody else, whether it's on a Zoom call or someone who you have sitting with you in your home and kind of inspire each other to try different things. So I hope you enjoy doing a little bit of intuitive drawing and relaxing and getting the creative juices flowing. What we find is that when we do some, something like this, we often uh, start to feel more creative or kind of get different ideas of some other things we'd like to do. So have fun. If you have any questions, please email Stephanie at the Caledonia Public Library, or you can email to mca at smumn.edu. That is our address at St. Mary's University. And MCA is the Minnesota Conservatory for the Arts. So um, enjoy, have, hope you have a wonderful weekend coming up or whenever you try this. And please feel free to send us photos of any work you do um, because we love to see what people are creating. We love to inspire each other. Thank you once again for joining us.